Oh, you haven't even started. Hi. That's all right, David. Uh, hi, welcome to Ghostman Radio Station. And my guest today is none other than Dave Moore, a Navy and Air Force decorated aviator and officer. He survived four plane crashes, flew free through three hurricanes, performing search and rescue with the Coast Guard, the dogged 39 combat missions in the Middle East as support of Operation Rep Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom. So you can say you've seen the world, been there, done that. And I think he's going to tell us a little bit about his story today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, David? And a little bit about what happened, why you were in this weird thing that happened to you. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, it's been, um, it's certainly been a uh, journey. And um, certainly unexpected, you know. And it's so funny because when you, when you say four plane crashes, even myself, having lived through it, I have the pictures, <laughs> I have everything, and I find it sometimes hard to believe. But the beauty is, is you know, we, we get this, we get this path, this opportunity. So going back to, you know, my whole thing is, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And going back to the beginning, you know, I, I started off very humble roots, I'm the son of a, a postman. And, you know, I was just trying to work my way out, trying to find a better, you know, not work my way out, but trying to find a life for myself, to build a life for myself. And I, uh, you know, I had this passion, this drive in aviation that I don't know where it came from. Nobody in my family had anything to do with aviation. It was just something inside of me, something that sparked that interest. And, you know, I always say that it's, 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 such, a, it's such a gift or a blessing when you have something inside of you that you just know that you're supposed to do, it might not be, you know, I don't do aviation anymore. It might not be a long-term play, but at that time, that was the catalyst because my story has nothing to do with, with aviation or, or the military or all those things. My story has to do with overcoming yourself, overcoming any obstacle that, that, uh, that you face and really unsurmountable obstacles that I was even told by a doctor that, you know, they've never seen somebody overcome so many things but I was so driven and just had the, the, the fight inside of me so going back to my first plane crash I was a college student I was barely making it by I'd gotten a little money to play football but I'm five foot eight with my boots on you can see that at my website um, more motivated m-o-o-r-e motivated.com and um, you can see some pictures on, on there if you want to join in there but um, you know I, I just I had a big heart I wanted, to, I wanted to get a little bit better life for myself and I got hurt on the field, so it was up to uh, it, it was up to me to uh, capitalize on this, uh, you know, amazing opportunity that I had that I actually got to college, which really, you know, wasn't wasn't a, a direct path for me from where I was coming from. So I was in college, and I was like, well, I could do this. And I was working, you know, I worked on the weekends. I worked at the steel mill over the summers. I did whatever it took to make the money. And during the school year, I was pumping plasma. I was living in a condemned apartment. Um, and and um, I was flight instructing for the university, and while I was flight instructing for the university, they asked me if I would like to uh, if I would like to fly for this company. Was looking for a, uh, a flight instructor. They had two high performance airplanes, and of course, Mark, my uh, my answer to that was yes. I mean, I was looking for money, it was ten bucks an hour, and you know, back in the, the uh, late nineties, that was great money, especially for a guy who's trying to pump plasma at twenty five dollars a a sit down, just trying to get money to get by to get this degree. And um, on December 17th, 1997, I'm flying for this company, Athens Rental Management Company, down in Athens, Ohio. And they had a real estate company, and he had a, um, a medical company up in uh, uh, Steubenville, Ohio. And I would, I would take the doctor, the CEO, I would take him back and forth, and I would give him flight lessons at the time. The doctor, absolutely brilliant, Mark. Absolutely a brilliant man, built these practices, came to America with practically nothing. The American dream, really, the, 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 the story. But the one thing about aviation is very vocational, very hands-on, very, you know, it's like driving a truck in the air, really. And he just didn't have that touch, that feel for it. So I spoke to his son, who was the general manager of the company, and he, um, you know, he agreed with me. I said, look, I said, Nathan, <laughs> I said, your dad's going to kill himself and whoever's underneath him in that airplane. <laughs> he, just, he was just not very good at flying. And Nathan said, you know, just keep him happy, just take him out, make him feel good. But, you know, Dr. Michael, he wanted to, uh, he really wanted to, uh, you know, be free. He wanted to go out and buy a bigger airplane and fly himself back and forth. He didn't want to be babysat, which is understandable. 
So on December 17th, 1997, I mean, you talk about being reborn, your whole life changing on a diet, and somebody obviously has a sense of humor because on December 17th, 1903, was the first flight ever at Kitty Hawk. Uh, we take off out of this little airport, and I can't really tell you the whole the plane story. I don't want to give the nickel tour of it because it's such a good, it's such a great, uh, a, a great, a, a great life experience. That so many people could draw so much just about life from. We end up, we find ourselves a mile and a half in the woods. And if, if you if you go to my website, I can't share it with you. You can see the airplane on there. And I'm laying on the bottom of that airplane. Again, it's M-O-O-R-E, motivated.com. And, um, you know, take a look at that airplane. I'm on the bottom of that airplane when I come to. We're a mile and a half in the woods. We're away from, we're, there's nobody around us. My face is ripped off. And uh, my, my, my nose ports are clogged. My mouth's clogged. I have to get the mud out. And, um, and uh, you know, and, and, and the, it's just amazing because I go from everything. I just want to be an American Airlines pilot. My whole life changes in that instance. So I get the I get the man out. We obviously we live, and you know, really, what I want to get back to, Mark, is it's it's the journey, man. You find yourself in the woods. Here I was, a young guy, 23 years old, and you know, my life. I had all these plans. I had all these things I wanted to do, and all of a sudden, I'm out in the middle of the woods, just trying to fight to survive, just trying to fight to live through the day. And it's just crazy when I look at it. And um, you know, my story is about. Uh, we, we get out and all that good stuff, but my story is about overcoming that. It took me two years, and I think anybody would say, you know, you look at those pictures, anybody would say that the, the National Transportation Safety Board the, the, and the FAA came in my hospital room while I was recovering, and I've had all reconstructive surgery on my face and whatnot, and, you know, they come in there, and they're looking at me, and the, the NTSB guy says, son, I've investigated hundreds of accidents, there is absolutely no reason you should be alive right now, and I'm going to give you three reasons why. And imagine taking that in at 23 years old. What do you think about that? It's an amazing story. I like the fact that you've entered a, you've got more guts than I have, a poker uh, competition. You came ninth place, which is like, I mean, a stupid amount of money. I wouldn't even, <laughs> I mean, uh, my big best bet is like a pound. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like, a bit like ninety more thousand plus than that. So you talk about my big poker win. Yeah, everything I do in life, and, and that's getting back to everything I do in life, Mark. Um, you know, so here, here's a principle that I've learned by that you have to give one hundred and ten percent in everything you do. So I found myself out in the woods, and you can imagine I went through post traumatic stress. Right, I'm twenty three years old. Everything I had done, I, I had done it to become a pilot. And now I'm a pilot who's afraid to fly. So I had to go through two years where I went into sales and I was selling boxes. And I was really just recovering. I was mentally recovering from everything I had just gone through. And this really what it's a testimony to and what I speak on when I come and give keynotes, I speak on uncrashable leadership. And I give the three C's of uncrashable leadership. I give that you will crash in life because that crash and all the rest of the crashes were of no fault of my own. Uh, this one was actually a deer. We hit a deer on takeoff. We never saw it. Uh, but, you know, crashes of life will come both physically, mentally, emotionally. Every day, people go through crashes of life. I'm not saying that you have to go through plane crashes, life or death, like I went through. I'm saying that the crashes of your life are going to come. But what I had to do is, because I wanted to get back into aviation, is you have to combat those crashes. So, I, you know, I was just a redneck from Pittsburgh who wanted to be a professional football player but just didn't have the physical characteristics of stamina. And I had to learn how to overcome myself. And what I really talk about is we're our own biggest obstacles. And thank you for bringing the poker up because, you know, we're our own biggest obstacle in life. And so many of us hold our own self back, not realizing our full potential, what we can really, what we can really achieve. And then my third C is commitment to self-leadership. So when I talk about leadership, I don't talk about all these 30,000-foot views or something like that. I bring it back to you and tell you that you can achieve anything you want to achieve in life. And thank you for bringing the poker thing up because a lot of people don't realize what an accomplishment that was to go in, the, in that poker championship to go to ninth, although I was heartbroken that I didn't get first. And I'm going to get back up on that horse. I'm actually headed out to the World Series right now to play for uh, 
to play for the championship again. Um, you know that when you put your mind to something, that no matter no matter what it is that you want to accomplish in life, if you want to play poker, be the best poker player. Go out there, and I did win a certain amount of money, and I have won a lot of money playing poker. Um, you know, and, and some people say I have this blessed life, but I think that we create that life. And it's exactly what I talk about, you know. So I went through two years that I couldn't even get in an airplane. I couldn't even talk about my first crash. And then I parlayed that into, I was trying, I just closed a big account for uh, Grife Brothers, the, the company that I was selling boxes for. And I was driving down the street in my company car and I said, I said, Dave, what are you doing? I mean, I was making good money, I had a good life, but I had not finished what I set out to start. And what I started to set out to start was to become a jet pilot and so I was driving down the road I looked up into the sky and I said Dave you're a pilot you need to get back up there and let me tell you Mark it was a struggle man I went I was so uncomfortable in that airplane when I first got started back that my legs would be straight out on the rudder pedals and I just sat there and what if and what if every single thing because what happened was my mindset went from this mindset of, you know, hey, I go out, I, I give a flight lesson, I go talk about it with my buddies, we drink a beer, we have a good time, to, man, I go out, and it's like, look, you know, man, you went out, it was not even your fault, you ended up in the woods, you're trying to carry this guy out, your ribs are broken, they said you shouldn't be alive, you could have died, and, you know, so my whole mindset had twisted like that, and I would not, I would not stop until I was going to achieve what I wanted to achieve. Because the way I see life is, is life is momentum. And when you get that momentum of winning, that's why I wrote Wake Up and Win, Get Your Life Off Autopilot. When you get that momentum of winning, it seems like you win in every area of your life. Poker, aviation, having a business, you know, growing a business, having a speaking business. I have other businesses. And I seem to be doing very, very well for myself because I have that momentum of winning. And I think that you could agree that if I stepped back and said, oh, my God, this was too bad. I can't get on an airplane. I can't do this anymore. And I would have curled up into a ball and I would have laid at the bottom of that hole and wallowed in my own misery. I don't think anybody would really fault Dave Moore for not continuing on with aviation or finishing what I started out for because they would understand what I went through. But I wasn't going to let post-traumatic stress and take that disorder off of there. Because nobody has a disorder. We all have post-traumatic stress. We all go through things in our lives, big and small, that are stresses. And that's all post-traumatic stress is. It's what you do with it and how you grow from it is what's going to make the difference. So I took that mark and I went from being afraid to flying. And I said, man, I need to go compete against the best. And a turn of events in my life, it put me in the Coast Guard become a Coast Guard officer, which was the hardest branch of the service that would not guarantee me a flight slot, and I still went in there because in my, I, I just knew it was what I was supposed to do because of the life-saving. I saved this guy's life. Um, it felt really good, and um, I went in there. They sent me down to Navy Flight School. I was filled with stress. I was filled with trauma, and I went down there competing against the best in the world. All those guys down there, they were competing against each other. Who do you think I was competing against? Now, I know you got a book out on Amazon, which is called Wake Up and Win. Got a bit of a longer title. But um, it's your, obviously your true story about your decision to have a win every single day. I imagine it's very inspiring to other people that have read it because obviously they read your story and they think, well, if this man can go on and um, do what he wants to do, despite all the setbacks he's had. I think they would find inspirational in that. I've read some of your testimonies, and I think I'm quite correct that on your website, which is, uh, if you can mention your website for me. It's uh, more, M-O-O-R-E, motivated, M-O-T-I-V-A-T-E-D, dot com. And um, yes, you know, Mark, that's the thing is I go in there, I love doing keynotes. If, uh, if, if, you, if your company gets a chance to bring me in to keynote, I guarantee it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And we're all going to take a lot away from it. A lot away from it. But what I bring, what I bring to the table is, is I show everybody that I'm, a, I'm an average guy. I was in an average situation. And I took that situation that could have stopped me and get back to like Navy flight school. 
you know, everybody down there was competing against each other, and I was competing against myself. And my big win there came because I graduated at the top of my class. And, you know, it, it was it was, it was was overcoming my own setback, my own obstacle, this fear to fly, and then moving on, and then, oh, wow, bam, you crash an Air Force jet. You have a mid-air collision, and they could have taken the tail off. I mean, we were a few feet from losing the tail, which would have put us into the ground, and we'd have been dead. And there's really nothing you can do. So it took me two years to overcome my first plane crash. It took me two weeks, two weeks to overcome my second plane crash. And then I keep pounding on. I keep pounding on the setbacks of life. I start to learn these principles about rebuilding yourself. The setbacks of life put me into a... Well, I apologize that this uh, podcast is a bit shorter than I intended. Uh, perhaps I should get David Moore to come on again. But I think we got the gist of what you're saying. I like what he says on his uh, website. When the crashes of life come, learn the tools to combat them and commit to creating a better you for the lessons learned. So, I would recommend you look up moremotivation.com where you'll find lots of interesting keynotes and speaking, upcoming shows, news, one-to-one, teaching with, coaching with Dave and testimonials. I think you'll, if you have a test, um, what the one with Dave, you learn a lot. Um, let's look at his book. It's a full title is, as I'll give it to you, and it's on, uh, it's available on Amazon under International Kindle Paperwhite. Wake up and win a free time crash victim's journey for, from surviving to thriving. With a natural talent, a charisma, and a dream, David Moore earned the right to work as a flight instructor for an IO, a university, while a student. But when he struck his plane during a landing, Dave dreams of becoming a commercial pilot will dash. The crash not only left Dave. With severe injuries, suppose he aggravated a deep-seated self-doubt. Dave went through post-traumatic stress disorder and eventually discovered post-traumatic growth. For years of overcoming challenges of recovery, Dave advanced in military career through wit through, though he remained shaken and allowed others, including his colleagues and first wife, to abuse him and make decisions for him. His book is a true story based on one man's decision to win every single day. Whatever success means to you, the drive to be his best. Dave doesn't, didn't, didn't allow his life circumstances to stop him from becoming a winner in all aspects of life. Through each story and challenge, Dave's passion is to help you overcome your obstacles, become your best, die, best. Dave, Dive deep, fly high with Dave as you engulf yourself in this adventurous page turner and an inspiring story. If you wish to get it, its ASIN number is B O eight H P L T N T Z. I'll say I'll say that again. ASIN number is B O eight H P L T N Z V. Sorry about that. Or well, if you want the IBM number, it's 173-225-1096. So go and check Dave Moore, inspirational hero, winner, and all around a nice guy. Thank you for listening. I hope to have him on again. With a bit of luck.